I believe that the price for a full life is mistakes. Mistakes are the price for a full life that you have to pay if you learn from them. I believe that hell wants to maim you and mock you with your mistakes. But heaven wants to make you and transform you by your mistakes. Failure should not become a prison house where you're held hostage the rest of your life by your mistakes. Let me ask, do you realize that we are in a battle for our lives? A battle to overcome three opposing forces, self, the influences of the world, and the sinister strategies of Satan. And let me tell you, this is no minor skirmish. It is an all out war. It is the war of the great controversy, good versus evil. And how we face the battle is up to us. We have one of two choices. We can either choose to remain on the losing side and be overwhelmed by our circumstances, overpowered by sin and dealing with doubt, despair, and defeat, or we can choose to line up on the winning side and draw on God's divine power and enjoy the victory of overcoming, the victory of coming out on top. And so we have to keep in mind the nature of sin, the nature of temptation. You see, the nature of sin, first of all, is that it attaches itself to our human nature. So we are inclined to a free will. We are inclined to prefer pleasure. We are inclined to self-preservation, which ultimately becomes selfishness if we don't keep it in check. But the nature of sin, first of all, as I said, attaches itself to the human nature. And so while you will never be completely rid of the flesh until you go home to be with the Lord, you can learn to subject the flesh and keep it mastered. John writes in 1 John 4, 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome them. He's talking about the evil spirits. You've overcome them because greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. The indwelling Holy Spirit will illuminate our minds. He will, with truth, He will empower us with divine strength and we will overcome sin. We will resist temptation no matter what Satan uses to lure us. Your mistakes are not final. Your failure is not final. Rejoice not over me, O oh my enemies. For when I fall, I will rise again. When I sit in darkness, the light will come. Take a moment and praise God for that amazing truth. It's right out of the Bible. I know that you can be set free from addictions. I know that you can be set free from demonic powers. I know that you can be set free from spiritual bondage. But the truth of the matter is this. You will never be completely delivered from the flesh. That is, you will not be delivered from the flesh until you've been glorified, until you've gone home to be with the Lord. What we have to recognize is the battle is real, but so is the victory in Christ Jesus. He promises us the victory of overcoming. I want somebody to hear me clearly. You might have made a mistake, but you're not one. You might have failed, but you're not a failure. You might be down, but down is not your destiny. There is a resurrection coming to your dream, to your life, to your call, to your purpose. You might, and, and, and here's what I really feel like saying. Just gonna go on and say it. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Resist means to literally take your stand 
against him. By faith in Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can successfully resist the temptation of the evil. And when we take our stand, the devil will flee from us. We will have continual victory of overcoming self, of overcoming the influences of the world, and of overcoming the sinister strategies of Satan. You did something. You wanted it. You had to have it. You had to try it. And you did it. You experimented with drugs and alcohol. And now you're addicted. You, you had to try. And now you've lost your purity or your virginity. And the enemy, if you, could, if you could go back, you would give anything to go back and change that night or that place or that situation that changed everything in your life. So no matter what it is, that you are being tempted by, no matter your struggle, it can be broken down categorically into either the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life. All sin ultimately falls under one of these categories. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand. That means to be established, to be unmovable to stand against the wiles of the devil, that you may be able to withstand, to resist in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, take a firm position in this battle against Satan. Sin has become brazen and bold. Sin is stalking you. Sin is after you. I feel for you. I'm not here to throw stones. I'm not here to cut you down. Because the truth is, 68% of all men, according to the latest statistic, look at porn at least once a week. 18% of all women look at porn once a week. One out of every five searches on the web is porn related. So is that what we're going to talk about? No, that's not what we're going to talk about. Righteousness is not permission to sin. But righteousness is permission to come back home. All sin is the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, as we just read in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. Draw near to God. Oh, draw near to God, and He will draw near to you. Do you know God is waiting? Even this moment, God is waiting for you to draw near to Him. This implies an intimate relationship. And this is how you position yourself on the winning team. There's no temptation that you are facing that someone else hasn't gone through before. You're not odd, you're not bizarre, you're not some unique case that cannot be helped. No matter what it is, no matter how perverse, no matter how wicked, I can promise you this, that ultimately sin is sin.